Lord is now all upon you, all over you. You're now enveloped by him. Is that, is that, is that very clear? It says the Holy Ghost has come up on, up on you, up on you. I want you to know we're going to look at some examples. It's so amazing as I was doing this study, I realized that the men and the women that God even used in the old covenant, we are told that the Holy Spirit came up on them. Up on them. Okay? We're not talking about the Holy Spirit abiding inside of you. No. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit coming up on you. Taking full control. Now let's go to Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3. And I would like everyone to read this with me. We're dealing with the Holy Spirit coming upon you to empower you for what? For service. Not for you to walk around and say, well, I'm empowered for service. And you're doing squat, do nothing. Okay? I'm talking about the Holy Spirit coming upon you, whereby there are things that in the natural you will not be able to have done, but because now the Holy Spirit has enveloped you and it's his ability, you're efficient, and you will see that there are things that you never dreamt of that you could do. Even if you're singing, your singing is different. Somebody will sing the same song that you sang, and your singing will be different. Somebody will play the same instrument that you play, and your playing will be different because you're not playing or singing by your own might. You're not saying, well, I have a good voice. You hear my voice? It, I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm good. No. It's going to go beyond your own personal talent. God will now empower your talent in a way that when you are doing anything, even if you're the one cleaning, remember some of you may have joined us for a while now. You know, we have um, men that we, we learned even to furnish the tabernacle. They had to furnish the tabernacle by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit coming, coming on them. In other words, God had to give them the ideas, the coloring, how to decorate the, 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 the synagogue, how to decorate the tabernacle, how to decorate the church. I really believe that everything that we do, we should be doing them by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. We should be different. We should be different the way that the world does things, even in our places of work. Whatever it is that's your profession, you can do it differently because you allow the Holy Spirit of God upon you to give you ideas, to give you ability, to give you, to breathe on everything that you are doing. When you are even talking, your words should not be empty words making noise so people will hear your voice. No, your words should be words that People can tell there is something different about her, about him, when he or she talks in the office. Everything about us, we should pay attention to the Holy Spirit upon us will cause your words not to just be an, an idle word, even in your profession. Is somebody hearing me? And so let's read Isaiah chapter 61 verses 1 through 3. Let's read everyone join me. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings. To preach good tidings. Let, let's go back. Uh, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. Proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Okay, now, listen to this. Let's keep this on the screen. 
So the Lord God Almighty showed and revealed to prophet Isaiah about Jesus yet to come so many years after. Okay? And so here, Isaiah began to speak words that are the Lord's words by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that came upon him. Did you guys hear what I just said? Yes. And so he was able to begin to decree and declare and proclaim things to come about Yeshua HaMashiach. Now he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And I'm going to show you that this is what Jesus said at the synagogue. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 and 19 Let's read that again. You can see that it's identical to what Isaiah the prophet declared. And Isaiah the prophet um, said that, but now Jesus, when he was at the synagogue, he said, everyone read this with me, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news of the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering all sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now, pay attention. Let, let's stay on that Luke chapter 4. This is Jesus now saying the same thing, declaring the same thing that the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 61. Let's read that one more time. Jesus said what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Stop right there. One more time. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Remember, he went and he was baptized in water by John the Baptist, and that same day he was also baptized with the Holy Ghost. And we remember, he says, you know, like the dove was upon him. And so now Jesus began to declare, he said what again? The Spirit of the Lord is what? Upon me. Everyone say that again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Now stop right there. Remember what he told the disciples and told you and I in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He said that the, the Holy Ghost will come upon us to become what? Witnesses. Okay. Witnesses. In other words, do all that I have done. Okay. Now let's go back to that Luke chapter 4 verse 18 and 19. Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is what? Now, Why? He has anointed me to do what? What are we supposed to be doing? To preach to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, now, stay with me. So you can actually say, in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when, when the Lord himself said, when the Holy Ghost will come upon you, you shall be what? Witnesses. What he was referring to as witnesses is what we are reading right now. It says, he has sent me to, read with me, he has sent me to heal the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering our sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? Amen? And so, what are we supposed to do when the Holy Spirit of God comes upon you? Somebody help me right here. What are we supposed to do? To preach. The to preach the gospel to those that are poor in spirit and to do what? He has sent us to do what? Heal the brokenhearted. And one more, to proclaim liberty to the captives. One more, recovering of sight to the blind. One more, set at liberty those who are oppressed. One more, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So everything we just read right now is what Jesus said we are to do when the Holy Ghost comes upon us. That's it. That's how to be witness. He just said, we are to do all that. 
were to do that in our Jerusalem, in our Judea, in our Samaria, and around the world. Everything we just read right now, he said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you should do that. Somebody hearing me? When we do that, we are now witness. In other words, we are now like him. Did somebody get that? We are like him. Amen? And so, so we are to go and preach good news. Good news. Not giving bad news. We should not be agents of bad news. Did somebody get that? We should not be agents of bad news. We should be giving people what? Good news. We should be encouraging people. Giving them good news. And we should not, we should not join the devil to be the one talking about bad things about people. Is somebody hearing me? We should be giving what? Good news to the poor. And we should be healing the brokenhearted. Somebody has a broken heart due to some things that happened in their lives. What are we supposed to be doing? We should be source of healing the brokenhearted. Amen? Why? Why can we do that? Because now the Holy Spirit of God has come upon us. Somebody hearing me? The Holy Ghost has now come upon us. And so we are empowered. Somebody hearing me? We are empowered to be able to do that. Somebody shout amen. amen. What else are we supposed to do? To proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering our sight to the blind. Okay. So physically, someone that's blind, we are also supposed to be a source to get them healed. Somebody hearing me? That's right. That's how we are witnesses. I'm talking about when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Okay? We need to know this. So it's not about just talking. We should be demonstrating the power of the Holy Ghost upon us. Amen. Somebody hearing me? Amen. Somebody should be following us because we brought good news to their desperate situation. Amen. Somebody hearing me? Amen. We don't want to be 30 years born again and no one is following you. Everyone say, God forbid. <laughs> and it doesn't take the voodoo people to have the power to be healing people. And we that have the Holy Ghost upon us, we should be doing much, much, much more. Because what they have is a fake power. Oh, somebody help me. <laughs> now, the other part of it says, let's, let's show this again on the screen, uh, please. It says, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. We should not be the ones seeing oppressed people. We, we, we label them, you know, they are oppressed. They, they are really demon-possessed. They are oppressed. What are we supposed to do? We are supposed to set them at liberty. Not to talk about them. Somebody hearing me? Well, I'm talking about the Holy Ghost coming upon us. We can set them at liberty by the word. Why? It's not our word. The Holy Ghost breathes through us when we yield ourselves to him. Amen? When we yield ourselves, it says, we can set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now read the other one with me. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Again, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen? And so we are supposed to be the ones doing all these that Jesus did. He came to the temple and he declared and he said, from now on, I need you to know my life has changed. That's basically what he said. He said, my life has changed. Why? The Holy Ghost has now come upon me. So you're going to begin to see a difference. These are the things I'm going to start doing. Now, question, question for everyone. Did he do that? He did. He did. And what did he say to you and I? He said, the works that I did, we will do also and greater. Okay, so at least let's start with the very first one. <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back. What's the very first one? Preach good news. Preach good news to the poor. Now, let me explain this. 
We are not talking about poor finances. Poor. We are talking about poor in spirit. Anyone without Christ is poor. Amen. I don't care if they have a million dollars in their pocket every hour. They are poor because they are going to hell if they die. And we are to do what? Preach the good news to those who are poor. How many of you can preach good news to poor? Yeah. Well, let's do it, church. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it, men and women of God that are watching. Let's do it. Let's tell people that Christ is the answer to their problems. Christ is the good news. We want everyone that we know, everyone around us to have eternal life. That's good news. Amen. Amen. Even if they are materially poor, at least they know Jesus. That guarantees them eternal life. That is good news. Amen. So I am asking every one of us to understand the power of the Holy Ghost that's upon us. Let's use that power, that empowerment. It's not just to say, you know, I, I go to some uh, charismatic church and I go to some Pentecostal church, I speak in tongues. No, 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 no. That is not why the Holy Ghost is sent to come upon us. It's for us to do all these, and when we do them, then we are indeed witnesses. Amen? Okay, now let's go uh, to the Old uh, Testament. Believe it or not, the men and the women of old, they were also anointed and empowered because the Holy Spirit was upon them. So David, you remember David, he tells us in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Please read that with me. Everyone join me. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Stop right there. Stop right there. So now the anointing oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon David. Did you guys see that? So we talk about David and we know that Jesus Christ came from the lineage of David. But David did not do much without the Holy Ghost coming upon him. And before he began his ministry... God told Samuel, go look for David and anoint him. How many of you are anointed by the power of the Holy Ghost and you know it? Amen. Well, well, if Samuel, prophet Samuel had to use oil to be the symbol of the Holy Spirit coming upon David, you and I have God himself, the Holy Ghost himself. From the day of Pentecost, my God, he came to the church. The church was birthed. And every one of you that's watching and you're born again, and you have asked the Lord to fill you with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. So the Holy Spirit came upon David in power, and it says, Samuel then went to Ramah. Now the Spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. So there was a departure. Because you know, we call him the Holy Spirit. When you talk about Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit indeed is holy. <laughs> he doesn't take mess. Okay, God and sin, they don't lie down together on the same bed. God and evil spirit, they don't have anything in common. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so when Saul refused to repent, the Holy Spirit did what? Departed from him. Everyone say, God forbid, that's not our portion. And so here we see the Holy Spirit of the Lord rather came upon who? David in power. And David, you know, David did exploits by the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh my God. We read the Psalms today, even till today, thousands of years after. The Psalms are still blessing us. You can read the same Psalm 
24 hours, 7 days a week, 30 days a month, and you will still be blessed with the same psalm. You will know that the psalm that the Holy Spirit breathed into David for David to write those powerful prophetic psalms. You can prophesy to someone just by quoting the psalms and they will be so blessed. Is somebody hearing me? How did all this happen? It's not because of his intellect. He was the youngest of the family. But God pulled him and God anointed him. Amen. That the Holy Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. I like that. Amen. The same is true about you and I. For every one of you, you know beyond every shadow of doubt that the Holy Spirit of the Lord has come upon you. You now have an ability that cannot be denied. You have ability that surpasses any human ability. It is the ability of God that's in you. That the things that people will do and you will do the same, yours will stand out. Is somebody hearing me? I say yours will stand out. You may even, you know, this is amazing because we had a, we had a get together in my home. You know, this is so personal to me, but I will share with you. Um, we had a get together in my home uh, with um, a family member that uh, came with his family from out of the state here in America. And uh, I had one of the ladies in the church that prepared some uh, good food uh, for us. And so this family, they were eating dinner with us yesterday. And the, my, my cousin, the, 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 the man, he made a comment. He said he has eaten some of these authentic uh, food in different places, different times. But he said this one. He said, this one is different. And he said, I don't know who cooked this, who made this, but I've never tasted one like it before. And I'm telling you, I know my cousin, he would not just say that. He would just eat and enjoy himself and not say a thing if he didn't mean it. He meant it. And I just smiled because the woman that did it, she did it with so much love. And I know that the Holy Spirit of God is upon her. Somebody hearing me? Even your cooking will be different. Amen. Somebody else will cook the same meal. Yours will taste differently. And it's not, you know, it's not the way you mix the ingredients and all that. It's just that the Holy Ghost has breathed upon you. He's upon you. And your, your hands are different. And the way that you put things together, they are different. And so the taste of the food is always different. I'm telling you, I believe in this. I really believe in this. I believe that you may have heard about th this kind of teaching before, but I know that the Holy Spirit is upon me to bring forth this word, and I know that he's breathing through every word that is proceeding from my mouth, that you will say, I never knew this like this before. I know it like I know my name. The Holy Spirit coming upon you, will now take your regular ability and transform it. And you will know it's not about your doing. That's what happened to David. Now, let's go to the next one. There's a judge in Israel. We're talking about you know, all kinds of professions, whatever it is that you are doing. So David was a king. Here we see a judge, Othniel. Let's read Judges chapter 3, verse 10. Everyone join me. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him so that he became Israel's judge and went to war. The Lord gave Cushan Rishathaim, king of Aram, into the hands of Othniel, who overpowered him. Somebody shout amen. Amen. And, you know, I, I want to stress just thinking about this a judge, an attorney that became a judge, Othniel. Listen to this. Please, please, everyone watching, I'm begging of you. When you start excelling in whatever you do in your profession, don't forget is the Spirit of the Lord that is upon you, that's causing you to excel. Please never you forget. Never get into a place where you are so proud and you think it's now you. Don't you ever forget 
Don't forget, look at King Saul, how King Saul lost everything. Didn't even know that he lost the anointing of the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, don't you ever, don't you ever forget that it is the Holy Spirit of the Lord upon you that is now causing whatever profession that you are in to excel so much. You know why? God can use anything and anybody to replace you in a second. Okay? So don't forget. Don't forget. Imagine King Saul will never ever have dreamt that David didn't just replace him. David now is the one that Jesus Christ, the Messiah, came from his lineage. Don't ever forget the Holy Spirit of the Lord is the one upon you that's causing you to shine. Because it's the glory of God that causes you to shine. I have seen people come and go. I've seen men and women come and go. Men and women of God, they rise and then before you know it, it's all gone. I pray that that will not be our portion. Amen. Let's not get into a place of pride and forget whatever opportunity you have whatever door that is open for you it has nothing to do with your ability i'm telling you your ability is shining because you are in the right place and you are with the right people and you are reminding yourself it is the power of the holy ghost upon you Amen. please continue to do that so we have a judge we have a judge in Israel, Othniel. He went to war and the Lord gave him the enemies into his hands. He overpowered him. I want you to underline that word overpower. Overpower is by the Holy Ghost being upon him to release the ability to conquer. Ability to conquer your enemies is by the Holy Spirit coming upon you. Ability to conquer those things that want to destroy you is by the ability of the Holy Ghost upon you. Ability to conquer those destructive elements to your children, to your grandchildren, to your family is by the Holy Spirit upon you. It's not by your might, it's not by your power. I am begging of you, don't lose track of the fact that the Holy Ghost is the one that is here on earth with us and when he is upon you he grants you the supernatural ability to be able to conquer all the time somebody hearing me now there's another judge in Israel his name is Gideon we hear about Gideon a lot it says right here in Judges 634 I want everyone to please read that with me then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew a trumpet summoning Abizrites to follow him my goodness now let me tell you there's nothing you can do in the natural by just blowing a trumpet Okay. <laughs> it's amazing. That's why we have to rely strictly on the Holy Spirit coming upon us. He will tell you to do some, some stuff that you cannot even begin to think in the natural, but you will know he's the one leading you to do it. And when you do it, when you just do it in obedience to how you hear from him and what he's saying, and you are saying, okay, Holy Spirit, I don't understand it, but I'll just do it. I'm telling you, he, he will cause signs and wonders to follow. But look at Judge Gideon. He did not think about what people are going to say. You are a whole judge. And what are you doing blowing a trumpet and expecting some people to follow you? What is that? Well, he sure did. He blew trumpet. And, and the, trumpet probably was, the, the trumpet probably was sounding like roaring waters everywhere. And maybe uh, the stamping of, of the boots of so many thousands of, of armies. But the Lord said, blow the trumpet. Says the Holy Spirit of the Lord came upon him and he blew a trumpet. So the trumpet sound was not a regular trumpet sound. Probably it was quaking the whole place. He was quaking. That sound was quaking that the people just had to follow. Somebody hearing me? Amen. Amen. Now let's go to the next judge, Jephthah. Everyone said Jephthah. Jephthah. 
I'm, tell, I'm telling you, look at all these professions in the scripture. We, last time we talked about um, the people that did the decoration of the furnitures, and now we're dealing with judges, and we have dealt with all kinds of different professions. Now let's read Judges 11, 29. Join me. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. He crossed Gilead and Manasseh, passed through Mizpah of Gilead, and from there he advanced against the enemies. Oh my God. I pray that the Lord will cause you and I to advance against any enemy of ours in Jesus' name. Amen. How? By the Spirit of the Lord upon us. Amen. Amen. Did you see that? The Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. And because the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, he was able to do what? Advance against the Ammonites. He was able to do what? Advance against the enemies. Yeah, say enemies. enemies. I don't know what the enemies to your life is. I don't know what the enemies to your health is. I don't know what the enemies to your finances is. I don't know what the enemies to your children's lives are. I don't know what the enemies to your profession are. But I'm here to say to you, by the Spirit of the Lord upon you, you can advance against those enemies. Amen. Oh, did somebody get that? Amen. I said, by the power of the Spirit of the Lord that's upon you, you can advance against every enemy to your health, every enemy to your finances, every enemy to your children, every enemy to your spouse, every enemy to your own profession, every enemy to your ministry, to your church. You can literally advance against them all. Advancing against them all tells me they will now be where? Behind you. Okay? I said they will now be where? Behind you. I decree and declare they will not just be behind you. They will remain under our feet. Somebody shout amen. 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 Now let's go to prophet Isaiah. Pay attention to whenever you see the Holy Spirit upon or uh, uh, with his spirit. Now let's read 16 and 17 together. Come near me and listen to this from the first announcement I have spoken in secret at the time it happens. I am here. I am there. And now the sovereign Lord has sent me with his spirit. This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord, your God, who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. Somebody shout amen. amen. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit came, he did in the life of Jesus, who is our Redeemer, who is the one that Isaiah the prophet is talking about. But isn't he also guiding and teaching us amen. how, when he comes upon us? Amen? Because for us to be able to do any work, anything whatsoever, service in the body of Christ, service in the kingdom of God, it has to be done through and by the Holy Ghost upon us. Amen? So he teaches us which way to go. He teaches us who to talk to, how to talk to them, and he directs us. Amen? In the way we should go. Oh, somebody shout amen. Let's go to Prophet Ezekiel. Prophet Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. I want us to read that together. Let's show that. Okay. Read that with me. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their fathers have been in revolt against me to this very day. Okay, I want to, I want to stress on this, that the Holy Ghost coming upon us will also allow us to, to be able to prof prophesy, speak to situations to bring things to change. Even, even our cities, even our nations, 
And here we see that when the Holy Ghost came upon Ezekiel, Ezekiel was able to begin to speak to the nation of Israel. Not only that, till today, we read about the prophetic utterances uh, uttered by Ezekiel, even those things yet to happen. Somebody hearing me? And isn't that what Jesus said about the Holy Ghost coming upon us? That he will reveal even things to happen in us, for our family, for our lives, for our city, for our nation. And so the Holy Spirit coming upon us for service is not just service for us. It's service for everything about us, including for our nations. Oh, somebody shout amen. amen. And so here, the Holy Ghost that came upon Prophet Ezekiel caused him to begin to prophesy over the situations in Israel and over situations about even Jesus coming. If you read all the entire book of Ezekiel, even things yet to come, the power of the Holy Ghost upon him caused him to be able to see beyond the natural. Somebody hearing me? The Holy Spirit upon you will cause you to begin to have insight into situations in your life, insight into your children's lives, insight into your own profession, your own business, insight into what is happening in the city so that you will not depend on the national TV stations to tell you the truth. You and I will know the truth because the Holy Spirit is upon us. You will not be quoting what some national TV stations are saying because a lot of them do not have the truth in them. And they only have a target to destroy the works of God in this earth. And so you should not be quoting and helping the devil to destroy the nation by quoting what these national TV stations are saying that are destructive to everything that Christ came to pay for. Somebody hearing me? But by the Holy Spirit being upon us, we have prophetic insight. We have the word of wisdom. We have the word of knowledge. We can see beyond what other people cannot see. Amen? Amen. Ezekiel was able to see thousands of years in the future. Why? Because we are told the Holy Spirit came upon him, came into him. And so he began to prophesy, and every word that he spoke, they are yea and amen, and they are from the throne room. Oh, somebody shout amen. amen. I pray that the Lord will grant you the desire to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to show you insights. Let's start from your own life. And you can be able to rightly divide what is happening in the nation. Whatever you hear on the news, you know this is a lie. And you begin to see the reason why they are doing what they are doing. All that the enemy is doing is to gather more and more and more people to come against the gospel. You always ask yourself when you're listening to the news, how is this going to increase the kingdom of God. If the answer is no, then know that everything that is going on is from the pit of hell. When you have the news encouraging men to lie with a man and promoting legislatures and they want to destroy any, 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 any representative in their, in their states that's not going for homosexuality, for lesbianism, how can, you, how can you even consider that to be the will of God when we know what the word of God is? So you, you, you don't want to begin to sound an alarm of what these stations are saying and you know all they are doing is to come against the gospel of Jesus Christ. You should not be the one proclaiming and declaring what they are saying. That is why the Holy Ghost comes upon us so that you can be able to discern, so you can be able to rightly divide the word of God and make the word of God relevant to where you are today. Whatever nation you are, you can allow the Holy Ghost upon you to begin to reveal things to you before they even happen. 
Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, what about Joel chapter 2? The prophet Joel. Oh, my God. The Lord used him tremendously. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. And we know that the prophetic word uh, came to pass and is still happening. Let's read that together. Everyone, join me. Those watching, join me, please. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on how many people? Oh, how many of you have received the pouring out of the Holy Ghost upon you? Amen. Shout amen, shout amen, shout amen. amen. Join us and shout amen. amen. Shout amen. 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 And then he says, this is what he says. It's not just going to be only us. He says, your sons, my sons, my daughters will do what? Oh, shall prophesy. prophesy. Now, let's stop right there for now. When he talks about your sons and your daughters prophesying, you can prophesy over any doom in your life right now and change it. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can prophesy over your health situation. Whatever you're going through right now, you can prophesy over it. And you can command it to change. Yes. And you can command it, I say you can command it to change. Yes. If you are going through any challenges in your physical body, and we are going to partake of the Holy Communion before we finish this today, I'm telling you right now, you can actually prophesy whatever that utmost sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, paid on the cross of Calvary. On the way to the cross, he was beaten up. He was beaten so badly. And the Word of God tells us, what that signifies, the symbol of that beating on his body was because he wants to be broken so that your body will not be broken. And that's why we partake of the Holy Communion. When we take the bread, the bread signifies the body of Jesus Christ that was broken for us so that our body will not be broken. So what we are reading right here in Joel chapter 2, it says, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. So what you do, you partake of that bread and you begin to prophesy and say, my body will not be broken. You prophesy over your situation. I will not be poor because Jesus Christ became poor so that I may be rich. You begin to prophesy that my children are already for righteousness and they are established. They are established and no weapon formed against my children will ever prosper. None whatsoever. You begin to prophesy that your children, they are going to serve the Lord with so much zeal. Your children will not backslide. Your children will not be wayward. You prophesy over your children. Prophesy over your life. Prophesy over your household. And then we continue. Prophet Joel said, and your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. You begin to imagine the goodness of God upon your life. Visions, you begin to tear down those imaginations that will try to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. And you will now exchange it with all the great promises of God for your life. That becomes your vision. Is somebody hearing me? You begin to decree and declare, and you begin to change all those imaginations that the enemy has tried to put in your mind that you cannot, you cannot, you cannot succeed. You cannot, you cannot live long life. You cannot, you cannot be, be known to be uh, able to do anything good. You cannot, you don't qualify. You begin to change those things in your mind by erecting the imaginations that exalt Jesus Christ. Yeah. Is somebody hearing me? With his promises, you begin to erect those imaginations. And he says, even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. How many of you know that these are those days? Yes. Amen. Yes. And the pouring out of the Holy Spirit is now upon us. 
Amen. And he says, And I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion, we are Mount Zion. And in Jerusalem, there will be deliverance. I said there is deliverance in the body of Christ today. I said there is deliverance in our households. I said there is deliverance in our city. There is deliverance in every place that we are in the name of Jesus. Oh my God, somebody help me shout amen. Amen. And so we are looking at right now the Holy Ghost came upon Samson. And in Judges chapter 14, 5 and 6, Samson was able to do mighty acts because the Holy Ghost was upon him. We know the story of what happened to Samson. He killed a lion with the Holy Spirit's power. He didn't do it by himself. The Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. Say this with me. The Holy Spirit has come mightily upon my life. And we also know that Samson was able to, uh, he slew 30 men. How did he kill those 30 men? It says, the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. Say this with me, the Holy Ghost has come upon me mightily. The Holy Spirit has come upon me mightily. Amen. Now the same thing we see in the prophet Micah. Micah also knew the power of the Holy Ghost and he was able to do mighty things. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you can do great and mighty things. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Now in Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, we, let's read that together. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Underline that word him. It's in capital letter. And that's speaking about who is the one? Jesus Christ. And it says the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. But Jesus Christ, he is the head of the body of Christ. Somebody shout amen. 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 And so because he is the head of the body of Christ and you and I are the body of Christ, we have the Holy Spirit of God resting upon us. And because of that, we have the spirit of wisdom and understanding. I want, I want Minister Dalet, can you read that for us, Isaiah 11, verse 2, please, in the Amplified. And the spirit of the, and the, spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and a reverential and obedient fear of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. And uh, I want to, let's, let's have uh, Holy Communion at this time. I, I would like us to um, partake of the Holy Communion. Those of you at home, I would like you to join us. Just get a bread, whatever, piece of crackers. And uh, you can get uh, water. I have the Holy Communion right here. If we can just give that out to, uh, to everyone in the class. You know, it, it talks about um, in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. Let's put that up before we close out. Um, it says, read that with me. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Therefore also that holy thing shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. Let's read that one more time. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the Most High shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing shall be born of thee, shall be called the Son of God. I want to stress on this. Um, Mary, the mother of Jesus, received the Holy Ghost coming upon her to bring forth our Lord, our Messiah. And this is what the angel of the Lord said. The Holy Ghost coming upon you will release the power to overshadow you. Amen. Okay? So I want, I want us to end with this. We, just, we are almost out of time here. That the Holy Ghost upon us releases the power of God, the glory of God, to overshadow us. 
Okay. And so are we, are we here by ourselves? The answer is no. Okay. When the Holy Ghost power overshadows you and I, when the glory of God overshadows us, we cannot say that something is too difficult for us to handle. Why? Because it's not our power anymore. It's the power of God that's overshadowing us. And it says, it, it says therefore also, that holy thing shall be born. In other words, it's, in this case, it's our Yeshua was born, but for you and I, the holy thing can be whatever it is that need to be made manifest will be made manifest. Somebody hearing me? Why? Because now the glory is overshadowing us. The glory of God has overshadowed us. I want you to raise your bread towards heaven and begin to thank God. Indeed, this is the symbol of the body of Christ. Actually, Jesus said, take this is my body. This is the body of Christ. As we partake, we say it to ourselves, he was broken. His body was broken so that our body will not be broken. Father, we just say thank you so much because his body, our Lord and Savior's body was broken. Our body will not be broken with any sickness or any disease or any ailment or any pain or any hurt. We partake in faith. In Jesus' name, amen. And we know Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7 tells us that we are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. Our sins are all forgiven. Not going to be forgiven. They are forgiven. As we partake, we are saying indeed, we receive the cleansing of all of our sins in the name of Jesus. And we have been redeemed from every curse of the law. Just partake, raise this towards heaven and just begin to thank God that indeed your sins are cleansed and continually being cleansed in the name of Jesus. As we partake of the blood of Jesus, we receive that cleansing, cleansing of all sicknesses, of all rather of sins and iniquities. We receive that cleansing and we are saying indeed, Lord, we are redeemed. From every curse of the Lord. Father, we just say thank you. We partake in faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to begin to thank God for what he has done. Father, we just bless your name. We thank you, oh my God, that we walk in wholeness. We thank you, oh my God, that indeed everyone under the sound of my voice, that they are walking in wholeness. We will live and not die. I decree and declare we will live a long and fulfilled life in the land of the living, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Until next time, know this, God loves you, and so do we. Write us and let us hear from you. Tell us how this is blessing you and tell more people to watch. This is OCN University, and we are so glad that you have joined us. We know your life will never be the same. Amen. Everyone, please let's shout shalom. Amen.